Hello guys and welcome to yet another uh, tutorial video for VR Chat. This one is uh, one of a couple I'm going to be uploading fairly quickly over the holiday weekend um, because I have a little bit of time off. Um, I won't have access to um, my actual machine to do VR stuff so most of my time will be spent working on other things and stuff like that, uh, videos primarily, things I have had in my backlog and haven't had time to get to. Um, this particular video is on a technique that uh, I guess I would call manual texture atlasing. Um, I, I'll, I will show you exactly what that means um, in a moment here. Um, so CATS Tools has the ability to run uh, texture atlasing itself. Uh, in fact, I'll show you how it turns out in a moment here. Um, but it doesn't exactly give the best quality the entire time. And the reason isn't that uh, Cat's tool isn't doing it right, but it's because of something called unwrapping. Um, in order to uh, basically paint the different colors on your model when it is rendered on the screen, um, your model needs to refer to something called UVs, um, which point to, I'm sorry, not your model, the shader on your model or the materials, depending on how uh, precise you want to be, needs to refer to a texture to see what to draw on the model uh, to keep it fairly simple. Um, so depending on how you lay out these UVs, um, these UVs can uh, basically show, I mean, they can be laid out in a lot of different ways. You can have um, UVs on top of each other if it's the same thing that's over and over. For example, these leaves, let me hide, uh, hide the armature here. These leaves on Eternity Larva's head are all the exact same texture. They're only referred to once in the texture. Um, so there's no reason to have a separate UV map for every single one of these. You would lay them just on top of each other. The cool thing about MMDs is that they come with um, UVs already done and they're often decently well optimized uh, depending on the artist who made them. Um, so we're gonna actually use this technique to essentially copy over the UV mappings from one to the other. Uh, in my other videos, uh, the optimization video, I believe, is where I did texture atlasing. Um, I showed how to actually perform the texture atlasing. Um, so let's first off show the tools that I'm going to be using. Uh, there's two tools in Blender that we're going to use. I just press Control Alt U. In fact, let me turn this on. I pressed uh, Control Alt U here, which brings up the uh, user settings here. Uh, the ones that I have turned on in particular that will be useful here are Texture Atlas, which comes with Blender. You can just search for texture and it will show you UV Texture Atlas, which is what we want. I will also use, um, I believe it is Materials Util Specials, which is just basically a bunch of extra tools for messing with materials, which we'll do beforehand. So first off, let's show what it looks like. Um, when we use Cat's Blender tool um, to do atlasing. And atlasing with this tool is mostly fine. Um, there are some issues with it that you'll see. So first off, we're gonna zoom in a little bit on uh, Larva here, and we're gonna look at some of the details. This is the base texture. Uh, I haven't done any atlasing or any modifications here. You can see that the, the blobs are a little bit, um, on her shirt, are a little bit uh, muddled. They're not exactly sharp, um, but you can see on her eyes that the texture is decently sharp. Um, that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is let's go ahead and take a screenshot real quick just of this and in a moment we'll compare this against uh, our result at the end. So let's go ahead and run the uh, atlasing with basically default settings. I'll turn the, I'll even turn the texture size all the way up to 2048. We'll point it at the body which is the only mesh. We'll leave area weight, angle, and margin alone. Um, I actually take that back. I'll turn the margin up slightly just to prevent UVs overriding from each other. Um, so if we hit create atlas, I'm not even going to hit pack islands here. Um, let's just go ahead and create atlas with the default settings and see how it looks. So watch this model here as it bakes everything. It's going to take a moment because it has to actually render this entire thing. So it's pretty easy to see here, even without the uh, comparison picture. Ignore the transparency issue that is easily fixed. But there's some weird artifacts going on here. First off, the face is completely, like, it, it's kind of a mess. It's very, me uh, it's, it, it's muddled, basically. It looks very muddy. And the reason for that, if we go to the UV here, uh, the UV um, setup here, is that the islands have been split up pretty, um, 
pretty la uh, in a very lackluster way i would say there it's done via something called the uv um the smart uv project and the smart uv project basically splits up these meshes uh based on the angles between faces uh, which is what this angle uh, thing right here means if you lower this you'll get more projection groups if you raise it you'll get uh, fewer projection groups um, but you get be uh, better distortion with this but still there's areas on here that i want more detail on like the face that have been shrunk down to basically nothing and there's areas i want less detail on for example like uh, let's see here what's a good one like this skin here doesn't really need all that much detail this is about the actual size i would want it in the uh, uv map um, but unfortunately it is this it is larger than the face which needs more detail so let's back up a bit uh, let's open up this version again um, so if we look here again this is the mo I, I just switched back to the original one before we started messing with stuff let's go ahead and perform the manual process so the first thing i'm going to do is once you have the texture atlas uh, plugin enabled you come down here in the render tab right here and you open up a new texture atlas i'm just going to call it texture atlas i'm going to hit ok we're going to set the resolution for this one in particular to a 2k texture so it's 2048 by 2048 we're going to make sure that we have the body selected and then hit start manual unwrap so what it does in the background um, if you care is it generates a, a duplicate of the original one so that we can actually draw out the meshes what i'm doing here to pull up this little extra bit if you're not familiar with it is i drag this handle and it opens up a new pane i'm going to open up the uv image editor i'm going to find texture atlas and this is the base texture atlas here so if i hit tab over here where your cursor is is important so keep that in mind if I hit tab over here and I'm going to turn on my display again it will bring up edit mode and it will select all the verts here we will now see that there are tons of things laid on top of each other so these are the different UV maps for all the different materials that I have on this character now there's an issue with this one I'm actually going to restart in a moment there's a lot of duplicate materials here all three of these can be merged together these can be merged together I've already run the cat's blender tool um, material optimization combined same materials but these materials are slightly different in the way that their shader is set up um, for our purposes we don't really care uh, we want these to be merged regardless all we want is we want each texture um, to be identical on each one um, so let's go ahead and reload the file once more so let's go back here let's go back into the materials um, and we're going to drag this down so we have a little bit of a better view let's go into edit mode and let's look at uh, our materials here so this one is the same is unique this one's unique this one's unique um, this one's potentially not unique let's look nope it is it's the left side of the uh, chest here these two are the same and you can tell pretty easily there's a different couple ways you can do it um, the easiest way to do it is to do the flat render here so you can see exactly the whole texture uh, to see what it looks like but alternately I just look at the orb and kind of guess at it um, it's kind of hard to screw up so we know we, we can merge material 7 and material 8 so the way we do this is while we're in edit mode we're going to select the material hit select select the next material hit select and then we're going to just hit assign and now let's do the same thing to another one um, let's unselect everything by pressing A. Dang it, I need to turn this back on. So A will unselect everything or select everything if you have nothing selected. Let's hit this one because I know it's a duplicate. This one and this one and just assign it to the last one. That's fine. So now what this has done is, is unassigned from these first two slots. As you can see, I'm selecting nothing and it's assigned them all to this final one here. So now if I come out of edit mode by hitting tab again, and I go to this little drop down box. This is the product of the other add on that we enabled the material special tools. If we hit cl clean material slots, it now removes those extra materials. This will remove some of the work that we're about to do. So, what do we have here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, that's not so bad. Let's go ahead and make our texture atlas again. So, let's open up texture atlas tool, create a new atlas, set it to 2K make sure we have the body selected and hit start manual unwrap so let's drag open this once more let's open up the uv image editor this little box here type in texture and we have the atlas hit tab and now we have all this stuff here um, what i will now do is i'm going to go ahead and just finish manual unwrap because everything is already unwrapped because we've, we're just using the uv mappings that are already present on the model so let's hit finish manual unwrap nothing's going to change here that's perfectly fine that's expected oh no i don't want to do that um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the model and in the model 
we now have a secondary UV map. It's down in the uh, the vertex data, I'm sorry, not vertex data, but the data um, selection here. If you scroll down past all the blend shapes and the vertex groups, we see these UV maps. This is extremely important, so don't miss this part. On the UV map is the original UV map that the uh, that MMD tools imported the model in with. Texture Atlas is the new map that we've generated. Right now they're identical, which is why when I swap it, it looks the same. But we're about to change Texture Atlas, but we still want to later on bake and render using the UV map um, mappings. So let's hit this little camera icon on the right here, which will tell Blender, hey, when you do any baking or rendering, use this UV map, don't use this one. So what we'll do next is we'll now pull up our, uh, we'll go into the 3D view and hit um, tab to go into edit mode. Let's go to our material slots here. And we're gonna click this little button down here that says keep UV and edit modes mesh selection in sync. What this will do is it will, anytime that I select stuff in the 3D view, it will select it over here. But I don't actually care about doing it manually with the uh, cursor and stuff like that. I care about selecting it via materials. So let's go ahead and start with material three. So now I have just the face selected, which is material three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit G, which is move or translate. And we're just going to move this in roughly a grid pattern. And we're going to move down the entire list, doing things one at a time, and get it roughly in a grid with one material uh, or with each material in its own special location. Now there's some that you're going to have this problem with where you see that it's stretching. So the best way to actually do this is if you uncheck this right here, keep UV and edit mesh mode selection in sync. Now all we have is just the stuff that we have selected. We can move this on its own, hit A to unselect, and then recheck the box. And now it's moved without screwing with some of the other verts that belong to other mappings as well. Um, so we're, we're gonna unselect and keep moving forward. Uh, the sizing on this isn't perfect yet, but we'll mess with that. So. Let's keep going. This has the same problem because that is the one that ha it had before. So let's hit that checkbox, select everything. You can either do that with A or just with a box like I did there and move it off to the side. At this point, we're just trying to get things visible so we, ha we know what we're working with. Let's just keep going down the list. This is the hair. So we'll just put it right here. You don't have to tile them perfectly as in like each separate UV mapping has its own little box. All you have to do is get it into a space that's empty. We'll do some rearranging later so we can make this more optimal. Uh, let's move material 11, which is the leaf. Uh, and it's darker here because these are actually all mapped on top of each other. If I just click on one vertex, um, let's see here. Actually, I'll show you that later. But these are all mapped on top of each other. This is like 10 different UV mappings laid on top. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is the antenna, which definitely doesn't need to be that big. Onto the wings, which are here. And finally, onto the last bits of the dress, which are here. So what we now have is the UV map is now kind of separated out and is going to allow us to work with uh, resizing and that kind of stuff, uh, which is what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna uncheck the box that keeps the uh, selections in sync, go into the 3D view, hit A to select all, and now we get to have some fun because we get to basically kind of play, it's like a puzzle essentially. You figure out what parts need to be larger or smaller. So this antenna is one solid color. It's just yellow, has a little bit of shading on it. It doesn't need that much detail. So we're gonna shrink it way down. We're gonna shove it here. It should be fine. These wings do need quite a bit of detail. I don't need, know if they need to be that large, but we'll just, we'll, we'll stick them like right there. And you wanna keep things roughly square because once we're done with most of this, we're going to shrink it back down. And then, hold on one second. My headset is beeping at me because I don't have it plugged in. There we go, problem solved. So we're going to rescale this down to fit inside of the box and we'll do a little bit more rearranging. So feel free to make this a little rough. Um, we'll move this inside of here because we got some room. Uh, let's move this up a little bit to make this more square-ish. This isn't perfect, but that's fine. Um, but we'll go ahead and select everything. You can either do that by box selecting like I did or just pressing A, press S and move down and we'll scale everything down. Now don't worry, you're not actually losing much detail here because you zo as far as I was zoomed out there, it was zoomed out pretty far. So, I mean, we're, we're not gonna lose that much detail from it. So now what I've got is I've discovered that I've not laid it out in exactly a perfect box, but that's perfectly fine. Um, what we're going to do is select these leaves, which I know don't need that much detail and we'll shrink it down. So and move it into a place. So as you can see, the, the process is essentially, I try and find um, 
bits that I know need to be larger or smaller. So the hair, let's make a little bit bigger. Let's move all the hair down here like that. If you're not sure if you're selecting everything here, like if you can't select things properly, like other stuff is in the way, select a part of it, hit control L, which selects all linked verts and move it around. So another thing that I know that we're going to need to do here is these two massive shapes here that I'm going to select like that. These are eye shines and these are pretty flat things. So I'm gonna shrink these way down because I don't care that much about them. This right here are the eyes. So I'm going to move them around a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. So if you're not sure what each of these things are, there's an easy way to find out. Let's do an intermediate bake. So baking is what we're gonna have to do at the end to actually create the texture atlas. If you saw the other video, you saw me do it there as well. Um, let's go down to the, in the render view, which is just the little camera, go down to the bake section, change full render to textures, because we only care about rendering textures here. Let's go ahead and set margin to 24 uh, instead of 16, uh, just out of habit. And let's hit bake. So now it is going to bake the textures on using the UV mappings that we selected there. And it is going to put it into our view so we can actually see where things are laid out. So this helps a little bit because first off, it shows us kind of how much gap we have with the 24 pixel gap there. It also lets us see exactly how much detail we have in certain things. So I see that this skirt, because it's it's so small on the UV map right now, is not getting that much detail. So we can actually scale this up and the next time we bake, we'll have a lot more detail for it. And we can also squeeze it in a little bit closer. We can also see for things like the mouth shape, there's no need for the like the teeth and the internals of the mouth to be this high resolution. That's crazy. So let's go ahead and move this up here and scale it down a bit. We can also see that the eyes, for example, were a little bit too close to the margin there. So we'll drag it away. Um, let's see if there's anything else that's jamming out at me. These little bits right here, I'm going to move up and out of the way. Um, I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger from experience from baking this model before because this has a little bit of detail I want to keep. Same thing with this. Uh, I th actually think that's about the right size. Thankfully for skin on the MMD models, they're typically just blends. So like this is mostly fine. Um, oh, another thing that I've totally missed. So something that may or may not help you um, is if your shading doesn't look exactly correct, go into the shading tab and uncheck everything except textures. This doesn't really affect you when you're working in shadeless mode, um, but it has affected other models I've worked on before. So I just do it kind of as a, a point of caution, um, so or a point of habit rather. So you just continue moving along, moving things around. Uh, if something is just one flat color like this, you can probably shrink it down pretty dang small and not really have any loss of detail. I know for a fact that this is like a little transparency bit and it, it, it doesn't matter. So we can make that quite small. Um, this little bit is used for something that has, I think these are for the eyes. So we'll just move this out of the way over here. The face is going to need a lot of um, sizing, or I'm sorry, a lot of room um, for the texture to look quite right. Uh, this little bit can move right here. Did that have enough detail in it? Eh, we can make that bigger. So this is a flat color, so we can keep this down here and kind of do that. Um, it helps to be organized with this kind of stuff too. Like the, the, the more that you kind of do what I'm doing and jank stuff around for the sake of speed, you're going to lose a little bit of quality out of it. Um, so take your time, make out, make mappings that make sense, organize it, make it look good. Um, and that way you'll come out with a better model in the end. So let's, let's rotate this. I'm using R to rotate there. So it's not just some kind of magical command I'm using here. Um, so we're going to move that down a little bit. Antenna, you can go right here. There's plenty of room there. Um, so now there's, hmm, how do I want to go about this? The face mesh is interesting in this particular model and with a lot of MMDs because it actually only does half of the face. Um, so this is a problem I've run into before with my, with my, uh, Cherno model. I'm sorry, not Cherno. I'm going to, I'm going to make Noe mad. Um, Chiru no model. There you go. A little bit better. Um, in that this, there's a seam that appears in the middle of the face and that is because the mapping kind of wraps over. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to re-unwrap the face and this is a little bit more of advanced of a technique. Um, so unwrapping is basically what's already been done for us in this particular situation, but uh, it's essentially showing Blender where it should on the model um, split it so that it can unwrap it and lay it flat like on a piece of paper like we've done here essentially which is what this is let's get this out of the way while i'm while i'm thinking about it uh, let's put it here 
Um, so let's go ahead and re-unwrap the face. Um, let's use this magical button again to select just the things that we care about here. Uh, and we're going to do a little bit of work in the 3D view here, so let's resize this. Um, now I'm going to hit Control i to invert my selection, and then H to hide everything. So now we've got the face mesh, and it looks really screwed up because we're, you know, in the middle of UV mapping, so things are going to look weird. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to Vertex Selection Mode, which is this right here. And I'm going to select kind of areas where I'm telling Blender it's okay to rip these uh, seams apart and uh, lay things flat so we can put more detail in. Um, typically, it's in a straight line up and down the middle of the face, but you don't want to actually get into the details of the face. Um, the better that you unwrap, or rather, the, 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 more, mm, the more properly you choose these seams, and it can be kind of just a uh, trial and error kind of thing, the better the result will be. So let's go ahead and mark these as seams. I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to write mark seam, and we're going to choose mesh. It doesn't, I don't think it actually matters if you choose mesh or UV there. Anyways, so we go back over here to this part, to the actual whole UV map. Let's go ahead and hit A to select everything, and it doesn't really matter at this point. We're going to hit E to unwrap, and now we've got this whole thing going on, um, which is, it is now completely unwrapped the face. You can see in the seams where it's kind of taken the model apart. One seam was here, another seam was here, and another seam was here. We honestly probably would have been fine if we had just defined that as a seam. Uh, but it doesn't really hurt. So let's go ahead and scale this down a little bit just to get it out of the way of stuff that I know that is there, but just is hidden right here. In the 3D view, I'm going to hit Alt-H, which brings everything back, and I'm going to switch back to point selection mode and to unsynced view. Let's select everything in the 3D view and start reorganizing a little bit. So first off, I don't know what these are, so let's separate them out if we can. Yes, we can. Do that and we'll check out what those are in a moment when we rebake and i'm going to rescale and remove this around a little bit giving it the proper detail that it deserves so we've got our uv map kind of relayed out let's go ahead and rebake and see what this looks like okay wonderful so these appear to be you know what i'm not really sure if you're not sure what something is in the mesh like if it's on the uvs and you're like what the hell is this um, the best way to do it is to uh, deselect everything, use this magical button once more, select whatever you have in question, and move your cursor to the 3D view, and then hit numpad period. It will then zoom in on whatever it is. It looks like this is part of the eye mesh. In fact, it looks like it's something that never even shows. Oh, no, 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 no. It's this part, too. It's the pupil, like the big colored pupil here. So we actually do care about that having a decent amount of detail. And this is probably about the right size. So now... We can go ahead and look here. There's a decent amount of detail left in the mesh, uh, or I'm sorry, not in the mesh, but in the texture. The eyes are quite large as well. This is actually probably larger than the actual texture it's sampling from. And it looks like most of our stuff is pretty much done. Legs and panties and all this stuff, that's about the right amount of detail that we care about having there. Um, so we're good to go. So now we have a actual, um, an actual uh, UV map made out. We're gonna go ahead and hit image, save as image, and I'm gonna call this texture atlas and just put tutorial after it so I know it's not actually one that I want to use I've already done this model uh, this is one that land whale uses um, so uh, now that we have the image saved we can go ahead and close this here at this point I would actually save a copy you should be using save copy like all the time control alt s I would save this as UVs done um, because if you get to the all the way to the end and you discover that your UVs aren't great, you'll want to start over um, with the UVs, move it around a little bit, rebake, and then um, you know start start from there again. Um, I mean, it's just like a game or something. You want save points. So the reason why we're doing that is we're about to make a destructive edit. We're about to delete every single one of these materials. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have the image saved, and make sure you have that image saved is something that you know that you can pull back up. We need to remove all these old materials. So let's go ahead and hit remove all of them and the model should be completely black add a new material click new doesn't really matter what you call it i just always call it atlas let's hit the texture uh, button up here so this is material button which is where i was just was and this is the texture button and we're going to hit new let's go ahead and hit open and select what we just created texture atlas tutorial hit open and then we can hit shadeless and there you go sort of so what you're seeing here these gray boxes don't really matter for our purposes, but I'll show you how to fix it regardless, um, if you just want to make sure it looks right in Blender. 
what these parts are, are this is um, transparency that Blender is not currently set up with this material to respect. If you want to do that, just to see how it looks, scroll down in the texture view to alpha, click on that, which will turn it black. And then let's go back to the material, go down to transparency, turn it on and turn alpha all the way down. And it should look pretty much how it'll look like in Unity when you bring it in. Um, if you're using the latest version of Cube Shader, which you absolutely should because TCL and Cubed have been putting a lot of work into it and it has a lot of improvements now, um, you would use transparent cutout in this particular uh, situation and uh, set the threshold fairly low. Um, then you kind of just adjust that as, as you're looking at it. Um, what you now have is you have a transparency layer built into that atlas. Uh, but regardless, we're, we're essentially done here. Like this thing is Atlas. Um, now you're probably asking, why would I do all this extra work? Um, atlasing is useful for, for, for reducing draw calls. You're reducing materials. So you saw before we had, I, I don't even remember, what was it like 12 materials, nine materials? I don't remember. Every single one of those materials in Unity would have incurred a separate draw call. It, you know, it would have been a draw call for the first one, the second one, third one, fourth one, blah, 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 blah. Only having like 10 draw calls in an avatar isn't that bad. However, if you have 60 avatars in a room and every single avatar has 10 draw calls, you now have 600 draw calls instead of something that could be 60. Um, draw calls I explained in the optimization video, but to just rehash very quickly, they are time that the CPU spends on sending instructions to the GPU. Uh, and I would rather spend that time on rendering more people more smoothly, and I'm sure everyone else would uh, prefer that as well. So anyways, um, that is basically it. From here, you would continue onward by saving, uh, exporting this as an FBX, as I show in the other videos, bringing it into Unity, applying shaders, applying materials, applying animations, doing cool stuff like that. But this video was just showing a technique by which you can do a manual texture atlas and get much sharper results, which I actually didn't show you, as you can see. Uh, much sharper results than we had with the uh, with the cats technique. Um, the cats technique, it, while easy, uh, does not have as good results. Um, so that is essentially it, and it seems like my laundry is done. Um, so that, I believe, is the end of the video. Uh, thank you for watching.